Hello, this is Photography Gamer. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at the photo mode in a new game called Atlas Fallen. I'll break down the basics, the advanced settings, and I'll give you some tips along the way. Okay, let's take a look at the basic stuff first. So to enter the photo mode, you need to click in the L and R sticks simultaneously, or you can pause the game and you can scroll down to photo mode. If you use the left and right analog sticks when you're in the photo mode, this will move and rotate the camera so you can composition the shot, get the camera roughly where you want it. If you use the left trigger and the right trigger, you can crane. Craning lifts the camera up or lowers it. It's good to change the perspective and the scale of your subject. If you right click in the analog stick, it will bring up the autofocus hovering element. So this, if you move it over an item, it will autofocus on that element. So you can move it around to focus on different things quickly if you don't want to have to do the manual settings. If you press the X button, it resets the changes. So it resets the image. If you press the A button, that will hide or restore the HUD. So it's good if you just want to see the picture without any of the on-screen interface. And then if you press the B button, that will exit your photo mode. And also to take a photo, so I'm playing this one on Xbox. So to take the photo in this game, you need to press the capture button once and that will save it on your Xbox or on your external storage, depending on how you have it set up. PlayStation, you click share button, PC, depending on if you're using Steam or whatever, it could be print screen, it could be one of the F keys, you'll need to look that up yourself. Okay, advanced settings. To switch between them, you use the left bumper and right bumper buttons to go between the tabs. The first tab is camera. So we've got camera speed, so you can change it from fast, slow or default. Now, slow is good if you want to make some small changes to your image, because fast is quite difficult to get framing right if you're trying to make a small alteration. Then you've got camera roll. This tilts the image. Tilting is good if you want to create dynamic movement or a sense of eeriness. Then we have field of view and uh, field of view is essentially it's kind of like a zoom you move it one way or the other it will zoom in or zoom out not very user-friendly sliders though then we have focal length this is like a quick field of view method millimeters refer to the distance in terms of the frame it's a camera term i won't go into the details of it but focal length is a good setting if you want to have a quick change of the composition in terms of framing in terms of zoom Finally, we've got the grid. Grids of thirds are good if you want to measure the position of certain items or objects in the image, if you want to have them equally distanced between each other, the grid is useful for that. Next tab is lens. So we've got depth of field on or off. So the depth of field refers to what's in focus and what isn't. So here we have focus distance, we've got aperture, and we've got blur strength. So the focus distance is where the focus is going to start. So ideally, it will start where your subject is. Aperture, if you move it down low, it will be very blurry. And if you move it very high, it will be more in focus. So it depends what kind of image you would like. And then the blur strength obviously dictates how blurry the blur will be. Next tab is exposure. So we've got brightness. Um, this is simply just brightens or darkens the image. It's not very good. There's no exposure setting here, which is a bit annoying considering it's called exposure. Then we've got sharpness just to give a crisp element to your image. So that's good if you just want to tighten up the crispness and then we've got saturation if we take it out it'll be black and white if we add loads it'll look very overly colored again you can use this in conjunction with filters to have nice effects speaking of effects we've got color grading aka these are basically filters but there's no slider so you just have the filter on or off a slider really would have helped then we have chroma shift and intensity now i can't say i know what the hell this did i used it in many many different photos put it on put it off change the intensity nothing really happened maybe it's a glitch i don't know but i can't really help you with that because there wasn't any real noticeable change then we've got vignettes vignettes are borders around the image that are like a shadow and they progressively get lighter so the idea is the border is dark the center is light and there's a bit in between that's kind of a bit of both so you can choose the size here and the smoothness and you can play around so you get a nice composition it's good for just emphasizing what's in the center of your shot Next tab is frames. So we've got aspect ratio. This just is like the, uh, the frame size. So you can have a square, you can have wide, blah, blah, blah. And you can choose the border color to be black or white, depending on what you want. Then we have border types. So we've got a few options of borders if you want to like make the image look a bit different. 
We have logos on or off, so you can put them on or off and you can move them around in terms of positions. Um, you can't do much more than that though. Then we have character tab. So here we have helmets, so you can show the helmet or you can hide it. If hiding is good if you want to see your character's face, but you might not want to, so choose the one that suits you. Then we have facial expression. We've got lots of really nice options here for facial expression, so pretty good mode. Character poses, these are really nice. They give you a, a way to change your character's position. You might not like the position of your character, so you might wanna make something a bit fun or a bit silly. So here's some really good options. We've got an option to look at the camera. So this is if you want to make your character's eyes look at the camera and follow the camera as you move it. And then you can also have player character on or off. So you might just want to take a picture without your character. That's how you do it. Okay, that's the photo mode. So what's good about it? Well, it's got some good options and it's got nice stance and facial expression settings. Bad points, there's a real lack of intensity sliders. There's no exposure, which would really help. And yeah, like I say, the sliders are very erratic. They're too slow or they're too fast. They lack fluidity and they just add so much time to taking your photo, really not good. Okay, so that's the photo mode on the whole. I would say it's good. There's a few functionality issues, but I'd give you a 7.5 out of 10 because it's pretty well put together. They've, they've clearly put some time into it, but it needs a bit of tweaking. And there you have it. That's the guide to the photo mode in Atlas Fallen. Any questions, put them in the comments. Until next time, this is PG signing off. Thank you.